we continued northwest following the river, the mountains growing taller and steeper. The green missing from the lowlands was all around us now. A new hope filled our hearts as we saw how well the forest plants flourished between the suns. Beneath the suns, we had left the desert. If the armies of the Empire had claimed this corner of the world, they would have no doubt defiled and destroyed this revivifying beauty for their unholy feast. But there was something amiss about the whole situation. They were adamant about stopping our march at all costs. They didn't even give us an opportunity to take prisoners. Their devotion to the supreme leader of their realm, and accursed names that were mostly unheard of amongst our kind, seems to be the sole drive for their existence. Uriah, Yechnogoth. Other than Uriah being a forgotten, fictitious symbol of corruption and decay invented in a primeval epoch of superstition and self-discovery, Anlinde knew nothing about the names. It suddenly occurred to me that our enemies could be seeking the same power we did, Subverting or destroying the figures who wrought the last downfall of the demons on Erdia would be a logical strategy, wouldn't it? Especially now that their bodies lie defenceless and frozen in time. Could that be the necromancer's true intention as well? But... At times, Malkashar would share, stare at the river in silent contemplation. I wondered for how long he had walked Erdia in undeath. What tales could he tell? What scenes from ages past did he see where I saw nothing but rushing where I saw but rushing water? How would it be to walk the world for so long, to watch civilizations fall and rise, to see everything you once knew destroyed, washed away like dust after rain? Was there anything in the old world he truly missed? Scenario 6, The Moon Valley We finally found the entrance to the fabled Green Valley. While at first the pass seemed to be completely uninhabited, the keen eyes of our scouts could discern some forlorn watchtowers of crude construction. The Valley of the Moon! Thousands of years ago, the people then living here believed the, the end of the world had come. Rocks fell from the sky, which was dark for many days thereafter. There were earthquakes and other signs. When the sun returned, there being at that time only one, they found a vast smoking crater here, and that night there was blood on the face of the greater moon. Orcs! This valley is infested with orcs! Intruders! Alert the chieftain! Did you hear that? So, this was your cunning plan all along, Malkashar? To lead us to orcish territory and use us as fodder for their grunts? To expand your undead army? Ha ha ha! I could have killed you all in your sleep had that been my intention! What would be the point of bringing you to this place when ancient dead warriors abound nowadays? Speak, Elf! Control your temper, you two. Those orcs should be our only concern right now. We have come this far, and the sands we left behind hold no promise. If we want to lead our people to a new and hopeful future, we must fight. Unless Malkashar knows an alternate route. There certainly are other ways to reach the depths if you search for them amidst the tall cliffs of this region. But we will invariably come across unwelcoming natives who will not think twice before killing you and your subjects. Your people are not accustomed to the cold and steep heights of Erdia. If you were to ask me, I'd say you could use this valley to your advantage. Let the orcs fall and perish under the might of the last forest elves of the Great Continent. I do understand that this is our best option for now. It is to be expected from such a desperate and foolish quest. Let us prepare for battle, then. To arms! To arms! Intruders, you say? What have the scouts been up to all this time that this was allowed to happen? Get rid of them now! 
Objective, defeat all enemy leaders to secure the valley. Well, this is a straightforward one. Um, as usual, if any of our three heroes are killed, we lose the game. And if turns run out, we lose the game. There is an early finish bonus this time. Um, I like that. It means that I can try and uh, stockpile some gold for the next scenario. Um, and also, I really like the shout out to uh, Blade Runner, the uh, dust in rain line in the uh, prologue. So shout out to the famous speech uh, about the uh, what's it? The the shoulder of Orion. Um, very cool. Anyway, let's get on with it. We've got Durbagar the Orcish Warrior up here. Um, we've got Diglett. Um, I think that's a Pokemon. We've got Barglor, who's an Orcish Slurbo. And we've got the boss man, Kalmagar, who is an Orcish Sovereign. Mm. I don't mind fighting sovereigns, they are less nasty than um, than warlords on the whole. They do have leadership, but the leadership's not a huge problem because by the time you're fighting the leader, you've usually killed most of the troops anyway. Um, one thing worth noting, we can see some water up here. Down here there is more water, and there are little houses around it. So it looks like you could get up there, and ooh, there is some sort of mine in this bottom corner. Okay, now my intuition would be that fighting against orcs, what you really want is a bunch of slow and relentless and reliable undead troops. Um, they're cheap, they are resistant to blade damage, which is a lot of what the worst of the orcs do. Um, they are vulnerable to fire, and that's something that orcs can also do with their bows. Um, but they also can't get poisoned, which is something orcish assassins can do. So I'm going to lead with a bunch of undead troops. And I'm going to see where that takes us. Okay, let's see what villages we can capture in turn one. Um, none. Okay, brilliant. Well, I'll head out towards them anyway. Oh, we've got a very creepy, aggressive music going on. No, I think the right flank is going to be less scary than the left flank um, from my perspective because the left flank has got three leaders on the right flank's got only one. So the obvious move would be to try and overwhelm Durbagar first while holding off in the south. Um, and in the south there's quite a lot of forest actually, so it might not be a bad idea to have some elves after all. My recruiting options are uh, just going to get mostly skeleton archers with a few skeletons in there for this first castle full of troops. I think you have to think a bit like Malkishar in this situation. You have to think these troops are probably not going to survive all that long, so it doesn't matter hugely if most of them just die. You can just recruit them, you can recruit more. I have a couple of bats. Um, bats are good for going around grabbing villages, that kind of thing, doing scouting. Probably won't recruit any more of those. Um, be nice to have one that leveled up, but not a huge deal. They're much more useful for the AI than they are for human players, because they're just irritating. They're just good at going around picking off your weak units. <clears throat> Okay, that's about 100 gold worth of undead. That did sound very convincing and leader-like, Malkashar. I am impressed. But trust me, nothing of this would work if it weren't my goal to find them as well. Of course it wouldn't. <laughs> You got a feel for poor old Gallus, really. He's um, 
you know, he, he doesn't he doesn't quite get it. He doesn't really know what's going on. And this is true pretty much throughout the campaign. Even though he's the protagonist, he's your leader. Um, he's really so clueless. So these orcs, um, so far, they're all just recruiting level 1 troops, except the Sovereign, who's got some level 2s on the way. Um, so I'm not all that worried about this battle. Okay, so about half my troops are going to go this way, and about half my troops are going to go and try and hold down south. Okay, let's look at my recall list. Oh no, before doing that, let's go. You go, Malkishar, you get that. Let's go! I want to be able to get as many villages as I can, because uh, control of money is going to be crucial for how well we come out of this fight. Okay, we've got a fair range of level 3 units at this point. Um, we've got Milongil, who is the MVP from the last match. The Lich, um, she's a boss lady. Um, we've got an Elvish Marshal, we've got a Death Knight, um, both of them pretty awesome, level 3 leadership units, very happy with that. Um, and then I've got a bunch of level 2 units who ought to be able to level up, including Volram, the Loyal Rider. Um, somehow I've ignored him in the past, so don't really know why. Um, bring him out and see if he can do anything for us. Then we've got all these Wraiths, and they're useful. Um, they're very fast and very powerful, and I suspect that if we end up fighting something nasty down here, a bunch of wraiths are going to be exactly what we need to fight it. Okay, so let's have some level 2 units. Death Knight can lead the charge up here. Um, I'm going to want another healer. We've got a Druid, Rothea, um or Limurea, either of these two. Um, Rafae is slightly closer to a level and she's slightly the better of the two. So I'll have her. Uh, so it would be nice to have, let's, let's get a sorceress leveled up again down in the south perhaps. And then some wraiths. And then I kind of think it would be good, it would be very nice to have a ranger, and Sithad is, is quite close to leveling up. Um, so let's get a ranger, because rangers can do decent amounts of damage to orcish troops. And they can hide in forests, which is brilliant. Alright, making a heavy gold loss at this point, I hope to be able to recoup that by capturing a bunch of villages. Okay, um... Now, Blue's troops can reach quite a long way. I don't think I can quite force any of them out of their comfort zone just yet. I'm really close. I don't want to rush Sothinia in and get her killed. She's going to be crucial for the rest of the campaign. So we can see Green's run out of money already. The weaker leaders haven't, probably just because they've got smaller castles. 
Okay, um, we can get in there already. It's during the day. Not good for us, not good for the orcs either. Let's see what damage we can do. Um, be really nice to get rid of that irritating assassin before it did too much damage. You can get in. I can't do anything too brilliant with these. Um, any time in getting rid of blue. Okay, so a few of those troops can get in on Sothinia next turn. If I put the bat up here, then it's only two of them, and the bat can hopefully distract some fire. Then I'm going to move in with my Death Knight. And I think Volrand, the Elvish Rider, is going to come up this way as well. Um, who else do I want on this side? The Wraiths are going down there, the Healer's going down there. Um, I think the Sorcerer should go down there as well. They are going to need some backup. Maybe Galas himself. So then Sithad is going to head up north. Who can this guy reach? And... Oh, it's the dramatic music. I like this music. Everything's so important and urgent when this music is playing. You can just about... Oh, you can reach it too. Okay. You go and grab that. As usual, Malkashar is going to function as a portable battering ram. And uh, hopefully take out most of these level 1 orcish units, which really don't stand a chance. Not against him. Down come the wraiths. Okay, last turn of recruitment. Who do I think is going to need support here? Probably the northern flank more than the southern. So I'm going to recruit a ghost, or maybe recall a, a low level ghost. I don't have any low level ghosts to recall, so I won't do that. Um, I'll uh, we'll recall Velia, who's close to a level. And then I'll recruit a ghost. And now I'm down to 45, so I have to plan my recruitment carefully. Um, I think more, more skeletons, basically, is the play. So, skeleton archer. And then two regular skeletons. And that means I'm out of money, but that hopefully will mean it's not too hard to get the kill relatively quickly. With that in mind, the question now is which way to send Galas. And just simply because there are more enemies this way, and there's also uh, maybe more forests. Um, uh, I do. I want to overwhelm Blue quickly, so I'm going to send Galas north. He's fast anyway, so he can get back into the action. <coughs> okay, and Linda gets a level. She can have Fairy Touch, which with a... With, ooh, the Drain Special! That's mean! Okay, that's going to be fantastic, I think, at later levels. Gossamer, um, plus one strikes for her range slowing attack. Um, not too fast about that. I don't really use that attack all that much. Um, vitality hit points plus three. I mean, that's clearly the worst option here. So I'm going to go for the fairy touch. Ooh, how dare you poison my bat! Oh, rip! Lose my out of money yet? 
but it must be close. Green powers on forward. I've got a lot of Green's villages now, so Green is not going to be so much of a threat. Purple has decided it's going to stop at the river. Black has got a lot of troops there. Right, let's move in for the kill. Or try to. First of all, you can only reach this archer, so that means that you just step back and let in Mr. Battleaxe. Alright, that's good. Um, can I now let Volorand get the kill? Unfortunately, no one else is going to benefit from the leadership here. And there are a few fast units that can come out on this side. <coughs> Alright, now job is to, next to protect Volaran from getting killed. Um, first things first, you run around there. Get a nice defensive position and do a slightly annoyingly poor amount of damage. You are not quite fast enough to get into combat yet. That's fine. You go up that way. You run up this way as well. One of these skeletons can follow you. And now. Quite late. I don't want to get outflanked over here, so. Not sure what's the play. Um, maybe Galas just go in and slash. Um, but there's no real point taking that damage when I don't have to. So I'm going to try and do it with um, Anlende. <laughs> uh, an easy three hits. And now Galas can come in and uh, do what is what I really want him to do, which is to kill this assassin over here. If I get a few hits in, might not. <coughs> Just enough. Okay, that was a little lucky. All right, now these people are relatively trapped. They don't have too many options. Um, I'm going to try and kill the one with the move, just so that I don't get any damage dealt to Anlinde. Right, not going to get the kill here, but uh, I can at least... I might get the kill, could get lucky. Got lucky, alright. And now you, now what I really don't want you to do is to... You can attack Volorand, that's okay. I'm, it's dispreferred, but it's okay. I... No, actually, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to stick the... I'm going to stick the skeleton on this side because I'd rather you don't attack the around. You can attack Latinia, but you won't do much damage to her anyway because she's in a forest, so she's hard to hit. What that does, does probably mean is that she'll get poisoned next turn, which is irritating, but um, we can always hope for the best. Alright, you grab that. The rest of you... I want you to find a defensive position, I think because we're going to have to fight off a wave or two before anything else happens. Um, these guys are so weak, it's, it, it really is just tempting to just go charging in. Um, if I at least go to that position, that shouldn't be somewhere I can't retreat from, and only the faster units can get in. Hopefully he'll get some nice drain damage on them, and uh, it's all to the good. Everyone else just run forward. <laughs> Gonna be cautious with the wraiths here, because I don't want them to get shot with fire damage. Anything else is fine, but fire damage is really their bête noir. Now, I'm gonna need these skeletons to... Now that Gallus has gone north, I'm gonna need these skeletons to push with this army. Oh. 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 
didn't actually expect you to do that, go and poison Dallas, but um, you'll get cured immediately next turn, so that's fine. Blue is still, still got, got money. And Blue's recruited a level 2 unit there, so I'm going to have to be careful. It's tempting just to try and run in and kill the Blue Leader immediately, but uh, oh, I don't want to lose powerful troops. Purple has advanced beyond the river. I hear come. Here come the orcs. The strong wolf rider. And the weaker leaders all, all have money. Alright, now it's night time. to get the assassins out of the way. There's quite there's three of them here. Um, I mean the assassins themselves they don't do a ton of damage but they do poison and the poison effect is extremely irritating uh, and it slows down the rest of the push so that's why I'm so concerned about them. Okay in that case I am going to go in with the Death Knight. And the Death Knight is going to attack this one. Alright. This ghost, um, if it stands next to the Death Knight, I can give it... I can give it the experience... The, the, I can give it the, the boost it needs to get the kill, so I will uh, try and do that. Don't know if it'll work. <coughs> It worked! Fantastic. Alright, this these skeleton archers. You go around the side. Lovely, that's what leadership can do for you. You can't get in. You can get in, and maybe you should. Yeah, I think the, the right strategy here is to push forward, even though it's almost night time. If you can get the kill, which only involves getting two hits, then this is going to be good. <sighs> Alright. Bring you round here, have a go at this orcish grunt. Now, I want to leave someone on this house. Um, it's irritating that these two that these two wolf riders can both get in here, and I'd really rather that not be the case. Um, so I'm gonna leave this archer here to take their damage. And I'm going to jump forward with Borand. Not brilliant. Okay. Galas. You're chunky, so you, I think, can take the damage from Blue's remaining four troops. If you can manage to get in there and take out this assassin. Alright, well I got lucky last time, so it's not the end of the world that I didn't get lucky this time. And then Linde can finish the job. Fingers crossed without getting poisoned, but... Oh well. Okay, probably now is going to take some hits, but at least she's got the drain melee attack now. Um, if you, yeah, you stay there, you'll get a couple of good heals in. 
and then you just run round to the north. Okay, that's the northern flank. Southern flank. Um, got some wolves. Got some wolves to deal with. Most of these troops can't reach down here still. So it's not too much of a bother if I just rush in. This is why Drain is great. Haha, <laughs> just look at that. Just look at that. What's Melkashar actually going to do here? Um, uh, I would like it if you could run forward. Um, but that might be too, too brash even for me. So I'm not going to do that. Instead I'll run in with the Wraith with the most health. Try and get the kill. <laughs> most experience is what I meant um, and there we go okay so now there is one wolf rider who can reach down here and um, if I move Malkashar up one then you can she can move down here without arousing any suspicion or attention by which I mean she doesn't get attacked by the wolf next turn the bat cannot yet reach round to grab this house, but maybe next turn. So again, I just want to put the bat somewhere where it's not going to get seen. That spot seems like the best spot. Yeah, perfect. And then... It's tempting to try and get this one to come in as well. But am I going to want to push forward at night against these troops, especially since there are more coming in from the north? I'm probably not. I suspect I might have underestimated what I'm going to take to hold on this flank. So I'm just going to consolidate my position here. Might in fact be better to retreat a bit. Alright though, I think everyone's moved, um, apart from you and you don't want to move, so let's see. <laughs> Lol. Oh, that's not lol. Interesting. So the black troops are all moving up, which suggests that they don't actually want to engage my troops here in the south at all. And now we know, finally, black and purple have both run out of money. Doesn't seem like blue has, and that is a worry. Um, I'd like to be able to just get blue out of the picture as soon as I can. So you, Death Knight, because you're quite resistant to pierce damage, if you can get two hits in on this Orcish Warrior, then that's that. Just like that. Ah, oh, this is why I keep you around. It's so, so tempting to overreach at this point. If we could put Andlindy in a, in a completely untenable position. If I, if I start running into this river, um, so I feel like right now I shouldn't, because it's night time specifically, um, it would be a bad move. I should just consolidate my position. But then tomorrow, tomorrow is another day. Belly of the Archer, hopefully get this kill. And then you can be a Ranger as well. 
I've got a um, level 3 marksman you know, sharpshooter unit already, so that's not a concern. Um, and then... That's a shame you can't reach, but never mind. You then can take pole position and uh, bear the brunt of the damage next turn. Over here then... to jump down and take out this wolf rider, or almost take out this wolf rider, and, got it. and then this skeleton can run into the forest and attack this wolf rider. Galas, you stay where you are, keep 10 health. You move down here. I don't really... Uh, yeah, there we go. You move down there and block Anlinde from getting... <laughs> you guys! Alright. Now, Anlinde should be blocked from getting attacked next turn, and she's on house, so she should heal. Um, which leaves this ghost to grab this house and reduce Blue's income a bit. Hopefully the ghost won't die. Um, you never know. But I won't be weeping too hard if I do lose the ghost, because it's a ghost. Yeah. Um, similarly, Volrand, you stay where you are, you'll get um, all the health in the world, and you jump forward a little bit. Um, or should you... no, you go there, and then you can heal the Death Knight. Hmm. Okay, over here things are looking a bit more challenging, so I'm going to grab the house with the bat, and the bat's going to keep on being irritating down here. Um, as it, it can be reached by a wolf rider, but that's not a great concern. And everyone else, you move back for now. Even the wraiths, I think. Or maybe the wraiths... Uh, it's tempting to, to have the wraiths move round, now that everyone's moved northwards, for the wraiths to move round and try and take out this crossbowman quickly. Um, No, since they've moved north, it's really only this wolf rider who's in a position to threaten any of my units. So I think the best move might just be to move up into the hills. And so that's what I'm going to do. Again, stick the um, less valuable undead units in the front just so that they can take the damage. You stay where you are, because it can be useful to have you, just in case, as a backup plan to hold this village. Um, and these wraiths just step forward a bit. You can go round the back of this house, and you can go onto those mountains as well. You... Ah, oh, lovely. You go in the forest. And Malkeshar. I mean, do I really want to prevent this, this wolf rider from suiciding on Malkeshar if that's really what it wants to do? Um, no, but Malkeshar could equally well be over here in the woods, on, in the hills, so that's what I'm going to do. Alright, see what happens now. Alright, there's, there's that... Um, <coughs> Fire damage can do to skeletons. Some lucky hits. Not dead, the skeleton's not dead. Oh, now it's dead. And there's some level 2 green units coming in. Um, blue though, it looks like I can take the blue leader out and then defend on the blue leader's keep for a little while. It should be morning next time. Uh, I thought it was going to go for the bat. Didn't get the kill. They really are. Everyone is very keen to go for my northern force. I do not understand it. And they're moving further and further away, and they're going to leave this black leader completely unprotected. Oh, 
Right, execute the pincers movement. Um, now this is not really a pincers movement, just realize that I'm Linde going in here and casting Ethereal Storm and doing 40 or 50 damage. Haha, <laughs> fantastic. Okay. Now I can pick someone to hopefully get the kill here. Most people can't quite reach. I'm going to have to be careful here. Um, perhaps this new ranger, who I'm not super wedded to right now, is the best person for this job. I retrieve 40 pieces of gold, which is actually enough to put me back into the positive. But only just, and I can only I could only recruit a civilian with this if I wanted to. Um, <laughs> and I can't quite yet reach this castle. So I have to do something about that. Okay. This looks good. This Skeleton is getting a bit beaten up. Um, I want someone, ideally, who I can just put onto this castle up here. Oh, they sound so sad when they die. Alright, you... Hey, hey, run down here, take this choke point. There's not a choke point, it just means you'll get surrounded and killed by green units, but, well, okay. You can reach quite a long way. I want you out. I want you gone. Alright, you're gone. So now, I'm not, not immediately threatened by as many units. Other than this one down here, there's one blue unit left in the game. Um, there is a green wolf rider who can reach all the way up. There is a green slayer who can reach quite a long way. And there is this green warrior here who can also, who's also got a bit of a reach on him. And the, of, of all of those people, uh, no, these these wolf riders too. They have the ability to go onto the castle. Um, so I do not want Anlinde to be killed. So I think I ought to put the ghost on the castle so that it blocks, and then the ghost I think will get shot down. But that's okay, like I said, you know, this ghost, love it to bits, but it's not my game plan. So Thinia, you run and um, give some healing to Amlinde if she needs it. Um, I want you to come up round here too. Um, no one can reach you if you do that, right? No, almost, okay. So I'll put you there. Um, and similarly, you, Valorant. It's tempting, given that it's the, the... No, it's not quite the daytime yet, but... Uh, you're not very strong, so... I'm just gonna... I'm gonna bring you around. Alright, southern flank. Now again, this this black leader is just leading, leaving himself defenseless. Um, and it would be really foolish of me not to kill him with the race. So I'm gonna kill him with the race. But first... Haha, <laughs> <laughs> nice. I do have to watch out. Crossbowmen are nasty against wraiths. They do their fire damage. Um, and oh, oh, that's frustrating. No, <laughs> that's quite. That is quite irritating. The assassin can get in there on the um, 
on the druid. Okay, I know what I can do to prevent that. This archer can stand there, and the archer will be poisoned, but archers, undead archers can't be poisoned anyway. So, no need to concern oneself. Again, up here, no one can really reach my troops. The closest anyone can come is this one, and as long as I keep them in line with this archer, it shouldn't be an issue. So, keep on going. Next turn. I can get some major hits in. I mean, it's actually, given again, given that it's the it's the morning, it's actually very tempting. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put this one here. And if he wants to come out of his castle all the way into the mountains and attack me, you know what? I'm fine with that. Because he can't kill me. Not in one turn. Oh, was that stupid? Yes, that was stupid. This archer can get in there. Not sure they will, though. They all seem to be heading north. But I don't want to move you that far north, so I'll move you instead along this way. Alright, anyone else to move? No, good. <laughs> Very glad about that. That means this, this, this ghost actually has a chance. That's an archer on the castle there is, is... Yeah, it's doing the Lord's work, ironically. And as day comes in, Purple and Green's troops continue to move north. Continue to move up to threaten this castle, which has got Galas and Unlinde in it. Um, but Black now has realised that, that they might be in trouble. Will it be soon enough? Now given that Black's just done that, I think it means that Black is going to lose at least one... Uh, I'm going to lose at least one Wraith if I go with the original plan and just go, go for, the, for the kill on Black. Um, still, you know, I think it's probably worth it. So... The one with the least experience can go in the place where it's most likely to get killed. Um, so little damage during the day, though. Ah, oh, it's frustrating. This is where it would have been useful to have a shadow, actually, because shadows, um, they do, they do, they get backstab damage. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull this off. Not this turn, anyway. Um, no, what I can do is um, have Malkashar run out here and uh, and take basically take on the world. And because no one here has bludgeoning or arcane damage, I'm reasonably confident that he should do all right for himself. <laughs> What is this, Max? Oh, come on! Alright, um, as assassinations attempts go, this is gonna rank up there with the uh, FBI Fidel Castro exploding cigar incident, I think. Um, now, the rest of you skeletons, what I'd like you to do, you go and, and um, support Team Kesha.
you skeletons, I'd rather you didn't get shot, so I'm going to keep you relatively close to the back. And then we'll see what happens. I keep saying that. Um, there shouldn't be, this is Battle for Wesnoth, there shouldn't be so much seeing what happens. Um, but I do need to defend up here, uh, and it's not going to be easy. I'm actually not sure what the best strategy is. My, the one thing I've got going for me here is that it's the daytime, but I'm losing money. Can't reach that that village yet to remedy the situation. So I need to form basically a defensive battle line, and and it's yeah. I'm going to attack this Slayer because if I get hits in here, they've got so little health for level 2 units that it's just really worth doing that damage. die, but I'm okay with that, because I am a bastard. Can anyone get anywhere close to this house? No, it doesn't look like it. So you can just run for it, and if you end up in that stream, well, a wolf could go for you. But if you're there, no one can go for you. Oh, brilliant. Okay, then someone else can come down here. Again, you, I don't, you know, it, it's not like, essential that you survive. You do some damage. Even if it's very little damage. Yeah, okay. Down here, people are going to break through. Can I push back this offensive at all? Well, I guess we'll see. Soon enough, I will have money, I hope, and we'll be able to recruit some troops to help me out. I should have recruited that civilian when I had the chance. So the blue player is completely out of the game now, I've um, eliminated their troops. Fare you well, skeleton, in the skeleton afterlife. Oh okay, dear, not you two. Yes. Well. This is bad. This is very bad. Run away into the forest, maybe. all of my skeleton archers in one turn. I need some disposable troops. Not exposable, disposable troops. Skeletons, that's a good question. Can skeletons be done for indecent exposure? Like, they don't have any private parts, so what would it even mean? Okay, they really want to kill the bat. I'm okay with that. These raids, they're just not hitting anything. No, this one is. But still, I'm doing below the odds on this flank. I think I can fight off Black's troops, though, on this flank. And the 
main part of the job is just going to be to use these skeletons to good effect. Hmm. It'd be nice to get Malkashar some more movement, but I think he's just not gonna not gonna do it. So just get a kill instead. Good, good. Someone come over here and kill this assassin for me. I mean, it's most likely to be you. You will then get poisoned. Or should I put you in the forest? Yeah, no, I should do that. The absolute no-no in this situation is that I really don't want my normal druid to get my, my I don't want my druid to get poisoned, and that will happen if she gets attacks or gets attacked by this assassin. And none of the other troops can reach. So that means I think that it probably is but if she goes there, so many more people can reach her next turn. Okay, let's see what I can do with the wraiths. I'm still, I'm committed to the plan. I'm going in. Credit to this crossbowman, he's um, doing an absolutely brilliant job of defending himself. Hitting with almost every single attack, every single turn. And now, it might take out my Wraith with 70 experience. Stranger things have happened anyway. Black, I can win this fight, but not without substantial losses. Um, well, you know, the more losses, <laughs> the more losses I take, um, the more income I will have, so stuck on that, why don't you? What I can do is go around here. Skeletons are just so weak during the day. Of course, one solution for my to my druid concerns is just to move the druid. Um, don't can't believe I didn't think of that one earlier. But first, let's see if I can maybe. I'd have to get very lucky, but I might be able to take out this archer. Still possible, just not possible. You suck. Skulls into the south. You are not my friend. And now you move there, and then no one can get in on my druid. All right, the very, very embattled northern flank. On the one hand, it's the daytime, so if I fight here and now, it will be not as bad for me as it could be. On the other hand, uh, Galas is still on sucky health from the time before when he tanked a lot of damage. Lots of people now can reach this village, where I'll only have 50% defense with my level 2 Elvish Rider, and I won't be able to rescue him if things go south, but still, I'm going to try it. You need to get into the forest. 
but maybe not before. Ah, they've got their... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty badly outflanked here. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull this one off. time you need an attack like that. Not really. Now if I come in with this ghost, with the drain attack, or maybe we're just with the, yeah, just with the whale attack. <coughs> you stay there, still only a couple of wolves can get to you, and you get onto the castle. Oh, and that's it for this ghost. Or not. I tell a lie. Oh, <laughs> why do I even say anything? That was so close. That was so close. I might even have been able to level up. Oh well. Okay, need to get rid of these archers, post haste. Get away from my villagers, I need those for money! <laughs> oh! Well, this is a real shame because, you know, this rate, this this Wraith gets the experience now, but, um... But the... <laughs> but it's just gonna get killed. Um, or probably gonna get killed, so yeah, right. Um... <clears throat> no! Why nobody protects me? 50 pieces of gold. Okay, maybe with those 50 I can hold in the north. Let's see. But this Wraith, I think, sadly, is not long for this world. Again, really close. Could have made it. Okay, beginning of turn 10, we are at an extremely tense point. We've got orcs everywhere. Purple and green are ganging up on me to overwhelm my troops on the northern flank. I'm only now defending with a death knight, a, a, um, one death knight, one rider, two rangers, Gallus and Linde, and Sothini the Shide. And so that is what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units. They're all good, but can they hold? Down here in the south, um, down here in the south, the leader of the black troops is dead. Malkishar has a way in. It looks like the black troops are going to get mopped up slowly but surely. But will I be able to recover from this position? Will I be able to rescue my troops in the north? Well, you will have to find out in part two. <laughs> <laughs>